Hi guys, Jangro here, and welcome to my Valhelsia Enhanced Vanilla Hardcore World. We are here taking a look at a new update in this mod pack. There's been a couple of new mods in here. One in particular that I want to look at today is the Simple Copper Pipes mod. And that's going to be part of a bigger episode where I want to take a look at item and fluid transport in general. You also may have been wondering what that was in my hand. And let's take a look at that first. Where should we put this thing? Let's just put it right here for now. This is a Valhelsia birthday cake. It is their birthday today, so happy birthday, Valhelsia. We place this cake down. It just appears in your inventory today if you've got, um, if you're playing it on a Valhelsia mod pack. And you hit right, right click on here. So, yeah, happy birthday. So, we've got a lot of crazy stuff over here, and I promise we're going to take a look at all of it. But the impetus for this episode being about item transport is my tree farm. And as we get into create and as we start to generate a lot of resources with a lot of the create ways you can do that, we're going to end up with a lot of resources being generated um, and they'll end up overflowing if we don't turn it off automatically. So I previously had it such that if this chest was filled up, it would turn off our um, in case fan and bearing and, and stop the tree farm so we wouldn't overflow things and end up with a bunch of entities floating around, which is terrible for game lag. But we want to get this stuff into our computer system, right? So our, our applied energistic system. So instead, oh, we can see it happening here. Good. So we've got the output of the tree farm coming out here. It's coming out the belt and it's dropping onto this ejector. And if we hurry up, we can see it landing. Should be one more. There we go. I don't know if you caught that, but that was the, well, I think, walnuts from the tree. Now this ejector, this is as far as an ejector can throw things. I, I'm not sure exactly how many blocks that is. Maybe, I don't know, 32. It seems like a computer number that it might be. And it goes into this emerald chest. This emerald chest has an import bus below it. And an, we have an applied energistics run going the rest of the way. And then it that comes into our applied energistic system. So we can see I previously had spruce in this tree farm and I just switched it over to walnut. And you can see that I had a huge number of spruce logs in there. So now we're, we're growing walnut trees here. So there's, you know, there's a, a mixture of a create and AE2 ways of getting items moved around. Now, as I mentioned, there's a new pipe mod and with the addition of, of this simple copper pipes mod, which these are them right here. Another pipe mod went away, which is, I think, the mod called Pipe, which was a simple way of moving items around. And there were, a lot, there were some bugs in that, in that mod, and they, I think they ended up pulling it for that reason. And they added in this pipe mod, which does item transport. They basically work like hoppers. So let's take a look over here at this basic copper pipe, which is like a hopper. It, you open it up, it has inventory, five slots, just like a hopper, but it can go any direction. That also allows us to do things like chaining these together in any direction. If we put another barrel right here, if we put something in there, in here, they're going to shoot out because of that open end. So we could block that off with something, or we can use these copper fittings, like so. If we put a copper fitting here, we can, we can kind of turn this corner, and now things are going to, things are going to shoot out the top now. So we need another copper fitting, which I've got one right here. Let's turn this corner with this fitting. And now all these things will transport into this barrel up here. But you can see they're, they're, it's, like a, it's like a hopper chain. And because they're, because they're copper, they weather. Now, the weathering affects the speed of the pipe. So the more weathered it, it is, the slower it goes. All the way down, so there's like if we take a look at pipes here, there are several stages of 
weathering on these pipes all the way to corroded. You can also color these pipes and they probably make pretty good decorations and, and building blocks as well. To make a to make a colored pipe, you need to use corroded pipes. And to get corroded pipes, you need to smelt a fully oxidized copper pipe. So it's a bit of work to get to corroded pipes and get to colored pipes. So uh, keep that in mind. You can put a dispenser in a hopper chain and it shoots things really far with a hopper in the mix. That's kind of fun. If you put redstone power on a pipe, it will shoot things like arrows. Power this. And then if we put some arrows in here, See, it's actually shooting them as opposed to just dropping them. So we can maybe do some cool stuff with that. Some other cool things about these pipes is that they transport other things. So if you put smoke source underneath the open end of a pipe, the smoke will travel through the pipe. It'll kind of come out the seams and it'll come out the end as well. So this is keeping this beehive, this bee's nest tame without having a campfire right under it. That's kind of neat. Another thing, and this is really cool, that pipes do is if they're over a water source block, 12 blocks away, so I've got it going like 13 or 14 here, so you can see it's stopping here. This basically becomes a water source itself in a range like it's dripping water so this farmland right here is being kept fertile because this watered water copper pipe is over it you can also plant sugar cane wherever this pipe is touching or the range is touching so let's see how far out we can go we can't plant it right here so we can run a copper pipeline a water pipeline as a way to plant sugar cane without having a water source next to every single plant that's pretty neat so there you go there's some pretty fun stuff you can do with this new simple copper pipes mod in valhelsia enhanced vanilla that's as of version 1.4 of the mod pack now what's going on here this is where i'm starting to i was starting to experiment with how fast the different ways of moving items around goes and what's the best way to transport items in this mod pack. Now there was a pipe mod in here before it was removed. I think it was a bit buggy and was causing some problems interacting with other mods like Tech Reborn. So that was removed and replaced with this pipe mod, which is not nearly as functional as the old mod with the pipe mod had filtering and things like that. So some of that functionality has gone away, but it's been replaced recently with Create. And we can move items around really effectively and really well with the Create mod. So that's what this is about. So what I have here is kind of a setup so we can so I can test how quickly these different ways of moving items around work. What we kind of kind of have a race. Uh, this is an applied energistics smart cable run with an import bus and a storage bus on the other end. And once we power that, those things will move. But let's pull that out for now. And we're gonna power this as, as part of this episode. Now here's a waxed copper pipeline this is the fastest copper pipes will go is when they're waxed or just you know they're pure unweathered state so these are the fastest pipes now these are weathered and so these are going to go a bit slower their cooldown is uh, slower depending on how weathered they are so we're going to be able to see you know how this pipe works versus that pipe and here's a belt uh, fed by a brass belt funnel, which means an entire stack of items can come out at once. So there's the whole 64 move down there on that belt. I've got a full chest, so that is why that is... That's why that wouldn't take that in. 
And this is the weighted ejector setup. And we'll see how that works as well. Now I have set up over here kind of a full chest detection. So we can see, we can put a full chest down the other end, have them race, and we'll see them light up when they fill up. So how are we going to get these chests to start all together at the same time? Because these are different mods here, we can't really effectively use redstone to control when these chests are going to dump out. So we have to place these chests down all at the same time. And to do that, we are going to set up a simple sequence gear shift with create. Just to show how that works um, in a fun way. But the sequence gear shift is how people make drawbridges and doors and things like that with create. So I thought we'd set that up and we can kind of get a how to use sequence gear shifts lesson with create. So we're going to do that next. OK, so we've got a few things we can do before we can run this item transport speed test. One is to set up this kind of gate that automatically moves the chest into place all filled up. We also need to power our applied energistic system. So let's set up our sequence gear shift. So we have all the create things that I think I need for this. Let's move these down. And we need the mechanical, we need a mechanical bearing right here. And it needs to be faced up. And on top of this bearing, we're gonna put a lint, some linear chassis. We don't have those. And we're going to put the linear chassis right on this mechanical bearing, like this. Don't have enough. We need a few more. Here we go. Okay, now to get this thing to turn, we need to use some sort of rotational force and we'll set, just set up a quick encased fan. So we need power for the fan or heat for the fan. This fan is facing down. We need to rotate this. And now we can power this fan by putting a lever on here. Let's make a quick lever. And we'll put, we can put the lever on here but that's going to, that redstone from that lever is going to interfere in a, in a second. So we're going to stick it down here on the magma block. And on top of here, we need a gear shift. And on top of that, we need a mechanical bearing. Now that mechanical bearing will automatically stick to a chassis, either a linear chassis or a radial chassis and we only need a linear chassis in this case because we're only going in one direction with the row of with the row of chassis now we need to power the sequence gear shift because that works on a redstone signal if we right click on here we can control what this gear shift is going to do so right now if we just leave it as the defaults Oh, we didn't power our we didn't power our case fan. So now if we hit this button, it's going to turn 90 degrees and stop. And that's it. And if we hit the button again, it's going to turn another 90 degrees. But well, let's edit this and turn it and set and send it back. Hit the button. Now what we want to do is move these chests over to here, 90 degrees away, and then send them back with another redstone signal. And we can control that with this gear shift. So if we change this to await new redstone pulse, and then when we get another redstone pulse, turn by angle, and we want to go 90 degrees back, and then end. So now, if we hit the button, it's going to... Did I do them backwards? I think I did. There we go. So it's going to go there and it's just going to stop. And it's got this program waiting. And we hit this to 
get to the next step and it goes back. So as our next step, we need to add some, some glue to the face of this so that it takes the chest with it. So let's move it over here. Okay, now in order to get the chest to stick to the arms, we need to put glue on here. And we just put it where the arms are, the chassis are gonna hit the chest, which is here. So now when we move this back, the glue will stick to the chest and the chest will come back with it. The chest and all sorts of other stuff. And so we need to configure these chassis with the wrench so that they don't pick up any extra things. You can see that these are set to They're set too high. Some of them are. And now we should be able to just move the chests by themselves. There they go. Fill the chests up, bring them back over, and they'll all connect together and start the process of transferring items. We'll leave that there so we can then fill up the chest before we get started. Before we do get started, we have to power our Applied Energistics ad hoc network here. And we're going to look at some fluid pipe transfer in order to do that. Now, in an earlier episode, you may recall that we set up this lava farm with cauldrons and ME import buses. And the ME import bus have to have an acceleration card to be able to pull a bucket of lava out. Otherwise, they don't pull a bucket out and they don't work. They pull them into the um, ME system. They actually go into this fluid. Lava is looking funny right now in this mod pack. That's lava. And it's going into this ME storage, wherever that may be. So this is a very expensive way to do automatic lava generation. But we're going to set up the same thing with Create. So let's head over. And we're going to set up a really simple lava farm with Create right over here. So in my portable storage, we've got a bunch of, somewhere we have a bunch of create fluid pipes. Here we go, here's some. And we're gonna put these right here down on the ground, running into, running into this uh, thermal generator. So if we put a pipe right here, and right here, now, create needs a pump. Let's make a pump quick. There we go. And that arrow is the direction that the pipe is, is moving. And then from here, we need a grid of pipes with cauldrons on them. Let's just do that right over here. I think this can turn the corner. Yes. And if we then put cauldrons on top of these, and run that pump, anything that goes into these cauldrons are going to get put into the thermal generator. Let's, okay, we need some dripstone. Some dripstone block and some dripstone. And we'll put these right up here. Temporary blocks. So let's put some more blocks here. And then on top of this, we need dripstone blocks. And all around here, we need a wall for the lava. Now we can break these. I don't like to use the Omni tool to break dirt because it just is too fast. Okay, so we need four. One, two, 
three, four. And we just need some lava to prime the system. One, two, three, four. And we fill these up with lava. And now these cauldrons are going to fill up. And while those are filling, we got to get our pump working. So let's do that quickly. And for that, we need, we need some gears. Not gears, cogs, they're called. We've got some cogs. So we're going to need one right here. And we got to get this spinning from here. Let's do it like this. And we'll put shafts there and there. And we need some belts. Just one will do. And connect this to here. Now we have to get that spinning. We'll do that with a vertical gear shift. And I have some gear shifts in here. Yes, I do. Gear boxes, sorry. Vertical gear box. We rotate it to make it vertical. We drop it right here. And now our pump is moving. Pump's going in the wrong direction. I must have clicked that somehow. And now when lava accumulates it's going to fill this up now let's test it with manually putting the lava in here there they go and they filled up the generator and this will just go on indefinitely filling that up. And we just add, you know, more cauldrons and dripstone, you know, if we need more lava. So now our our import bus and stuff should work. Let's do a quick test without moving things back. Actually, let's just move things back and test it. That's easy. And if we put Since this chest is full, it's not going to go anywhere. Here they come. Now it's working. That's pretty slow. Now in order to make this a fair race, we should probably add some acceleration cards to the import bus. Let's do that first. We'll add three. Now, when we drop something in here, make room for it. Well, that was fast. All right. That is the speed that applied energistics should go in. Okay, let's set up the test. Let's get the rain, let's get rid of the rain, and then we'll come back and start up the test. All right, it is a bright sunny morning. The rainbow is up and perfect day for a speed test on the different item transports. So what we need to do is get these items from these chests into these chests. And I think the easiest way to do that, talked about item transport, is to, let's just carry these chests over one at a time by picking them up. We'll just put them all over here. These chests are all full of cobble. These ones we can just break and replace. And 
now we put these full chests in their spots right here. Pretty effective way to move items around, actually, which is relevant to this episode. Okay, so now we are going to hit the button, stand back, and watch things go. Are we ready? Here we go. Make sure everything is set up. Here they go. We can hear the pipes moving items. We can see our belt, and we'll watch and see which one finishes first. I already know it's going to be the belt. The ejector is shooting block 64 items at a time. The applied energistic system finished, thanks to the acceleration. And the copper pipes and the ejector coming along. The ejector has to fire 27 times and the pipes are moving things as quickly as they can. There goes the ejector. The copper pipes are still plodding along. All right, future Scott here with the results of this test while we're speeding through and waiting for the copper pipes to finish. The belt finished in 16 seconds. AE2 finished in 21 seconds. It could probably beat the belt if we added one more acceleration card. The ejector took 62 seconds. Now, there's a problem. I think you can see it. There's one non-waxed pipe in the waxed pipe line which caused them both to finish in about five minutes. But I did another test with all wax pipes and it took three minutes for that stretch. Bottom line, copper pipes are just slow. Like hoppers, you're not gonna to wanna to use them for long stretches. They're great for moving things around in tight spaces, probably. Back to video, Scott. So if you need to move items around, uh, belts and applied energistics are definitely the fastest way to do it, especially with acceleration cards in the applied energistic um, import bus. Pipes are great if you just need to move things back and forth. It doesn't matter how fast they go. Maybe not over long distances, but they look pretty cool. You can use them in your builds and they water your crops. And there you have it. And we're going to wrap it up there. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, please click the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And once again, happy birthday to Valhalsia.